This ride could have been so much better. But the ride isn't bad. This is my review of Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain, arguably one of the most useless pieces of coaster in the world. Goliath was my first ever hyper coaster. When I went on this coaster, I wasn't expecting much from what I've heard from the other enthusiasts. So that's probably why I like this coaster more than other people. Not to say that I like this coaster, it's near the bottom of my rankings, actually. I think of this coaster as the most mid coaster in like all of the world. So let's start with the layout. Goliath has a drop of 255 feet. This drop would have given a little pop of airtime if it wasn't for the ride slowing down so much on the lift hill at the top of the ride. But to make up for it, the valley of the first drop gives lots of positive Gs. Next comes a super high turnaround that gives a pinch of laterals at the top and has a steeper drop than the actual first drop, which is kind of weird. Next is the infamous elongated floater hill. I think this hill gives a little bit of floater airtime, but then not enough to be actually called airtime. Next, the ride goes up into the mid-course break run, which literally stops the ride into a dead halt. Like, I'm not even kidding. Look at the POV right now. The ride literally just stopped on the mid-course break run. Okay, well, sometimes it slows it down to a very slow crawl, but then it just usually doesn't slow it down to a halt. After the mid-course break run, the ride goes into a small twisted drop, which if you're in the front half of the train, you usually dangle to the side because you're going so slow. The valley for this drop is the next high positive G part of the ride. It doesn't look intense on the footage, but it grays me out every single time. Next are a few banked turns following the twister hyper layout style with a bunch of head choppers from the supports. And then comes the infamous downwards double helix. It's not the most intense part of the ride. Honestly, I don't get why people say this helix is so bone crushing and everything. But anyways, after that comes another banked turn and then goes into the brakes. Now that is the full layout. Now let me talk about the trains for a sec. First of all, they look ugly. I don't know why, I just don't like the look of these trains. I mean like I don't have a problem with it since I don't really care, but yeah. Second of all, they're cramped. Now that's not a thing you hear every day. I feel like the seats are way too far down and the floor where I put my feet are way too far up. So I'm like almost in a crouching position. And when the ride ops try to staple me by pushing my lap bar down, they crush my legs into the bottom of the seat. Hey, but at least my upper body is free, so I'm not complaining that much. Also, laterals on this coaster feel absolutely terrible. Like during the transition into the mid-course brake run, the track is still turning, but then the banking is leveling out, so I'm at zero degrees banking and we're still turning and I'm just getting pushed to the side of the train. But I think I'm complaining too much since nobody else really argues about this stuff. I mean, not every coaster is perfect, right? So I guess it is what it is. But seriously, a B&M Hyper like Raging Bull or something could have fit here way better. The most mid coaster in the world, 5 out of 10.